amateur and pro photographers alike are always making financial decisions about which gear to upgrade on, where should I save money, should you buy that brand new Leica M27 Kim Kardashian limited edition gold plated $50,000 camera with a shutter button shaped like a giant booty, should you buy that camera with the kit lens or upgrade later, do you need the latest accessories that are faster and more reliable? I don't know. I can only tell you what I do, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna talk about where I upgrade and where I save with my photography gear, so let's get into it and let's talk photography. So let's dive in. Today I'm going to break things into two categories, either save, which is where you, I think you can save money or where I like to save money, and then upgrade, where I like to spend my money and splurge a little bit in these categories. And also I should note, for those of you that are new here, I am a professional photographer. I own multiple photography businesses. So keep that in mind when I talk about where I like to save and where I like to spend, because it might not work for you. This is only what works for me. So let's start with the camera body. That's the biggest one. That's the sexiest one. That's the one that people get the most excited about. So this one is gonna surprise you because this is actually a hard save for me rather than an upgrade. So for those of you that have followed me for a while, you know I've got good gear, right? A lot of you know I've got a Leica M10D. That's an expensive camera. For my commercial photography, I used to use a Hasselblad system, but I have changed that. I've actually downgraded in some ways and in some ways it's an upgrade, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And for me, oftentimes I'm not even buying the top of the line cameras in my commercial work because I necessarily need them. And I'm not even doing it because the client necessarily needs it. I'm actually doing it because the client thinks they need it. If that makes sense. Most of the time, you don't need it. You know, and as a pro, I don't even need it. Today's gonna be all about taking a long, hard look in the mirror and realizing like what you actually need. Do you really need it? and what you don't. I'll start with my commercial work. I was using a Hasselblad X1D and all the XCD lenses and it got really expensive. And recently we made a business decision to downgrade in some ways. We switched over to a Sony system, a Sony A7R4, which is still a whopping 60 megapixels and it's still overkill for like 90% of what I shoot. But in some ways it offered a lot of things that the Hasselblad system didn't. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but it offered more compatibility and more versatility and also saved me a ton of money as well. And for me across the board, especially my commercial work, but even my Leica system for my personal work and my editorial work, I get enough of it where it pays for itself, where I can justify it, but I didn't for a long time. It took a decade for me to splurge on this fancy equipment, and that's a decade of working as a professional photographer. So looking back, I can give advice to a lot of you out there that are just starting out, or especially you amateurs that don't need all this stuff. Like, really think about it. Do you need 50 megapixels, or is 24 megapixels just fine? Do you need a camera that actually has really good video capabilities? Like, I do, but you might not. And if you do think you want a camera that shoots video well, do you really need 8K? Do you really even need 4K? Just a little insight, we shoot professional commercial work for global brands and we have cameras that can shoot 4K because some clients ask for it, but we don't need it. Most of the time we're shooting in 1080, we're shooting in HD and that is honestly plenty. When we downgraded the sensor, going from that medium format sensor from that Sony a7R4, which is still a powerful 60 megapixel sensor, but when we switched from the Hasselblad system to the Sony system, we've shot several high-end jobs with multiple people from the local marketing team and at a corporate level, scanning and nitpicking and looking closely at the photographs, and no one has noticed the difference at all. Even Ari Toucher, who is like right in there, closer than you'll ever be, like this close looking in, seeing all that stuff, he could barely tell the difference. I mean, it, yes, he knows the difference because that's what he does, but he could barely tell the difference. So like, really, for you, as an individual that's not monetizing your work, or even just getting started in your business, do you need to splurge in that category? And the answer most of the time for most of you is probably not. So you can save money here. You can save money by not buying the top of line version of that Sony or that Canon, or even buying a used camera from a couple years ago that has everything you need. Again, probably shoots in 1080, probably shoots 24 megapixels, and that will be plenty. And you will save 
thousands of dollars. And with those thousands of dollars, you can use that money to upgrade on the next category I'm gonna talk about, which is lenses. So lenses or glass, if you're cool. I don't think it sounds cool when people call it glass, like pass me my glass. Uh, for glass, I'm shooting with a, I got a 1.4, a 0.95, a sub one. You know, anyway, some people call it glass, some people call it lenses. This is going to be a hard upgrade for me. So when you're buying a brand new camera, if you think you're gonna grow into your photography, and I should make a quick note here about the cameras, actually, I meant to put this in, so I'll do it now. While I mean you should save on cameras and maybe buying an older model, an upgrade situation would be maybe for someone that thinks they're really gonna grow into photography, if you know you've got a passion for it. I would say an upgrade is nice there if you're talking about going from like a little point and shoot or going from a camera phone to a digital SLR, because then you can change lenses, and that opens up all sorts of different creative possibilities. So that's like a little sub upgrade on the camera department. Okay, let's get back into the lenses. Let's get back into the glass. And this is a hard upgrade for me. So if you're buying a new camera or you're buying a used camera, like I've suggested, you've taken my advice and you've got a couple thousand dollars that you've saved on that used camera, then this is where I'm gonna say to upgrade and don't buy that camera with the kit lens. Those are usually pretty cheap and they're usually not so great in low light. That's where I would say to upgrade. Don't necessarily upgrade on the brand itself. Third party lenses are actually pretty good and I never used to think this way, but we bought a bunch of Sigma lenses for our Sony system for video and stills and we absolutely love them and we saved a ton of money on them. We bought nice glass and that's what I'm gonna say is buy nice glass. What I mean by nice glass is we tend to buy the top of the line of whatever system. So if you're gonna go Sony, I would go Sony G Master. If you're gonna go Sigma, Sigma Art and then get lenses that can shoot wide open like 1.4 rather than those kit lenses or even some of those cheaper prime lenses that might only go to like F4 or maybe 2.8. The look you get at 1.4 is just so nice, but it's not just the look, it's not just the rendering of the lens, but it also just opens up a lot more creative opportunity to shoot with natural light in very low light situations. So if you like doing street photography at nighttime, early morning, or even in indoor situations, it really comes in handy. And for me, I like to spread that across different prime lenses. I typically go with a 35, a 50, and an 85, and maybe sometimes a 24 as well. Start with one prime lens that you really like that focal length, buy a 1.4 lens, buy a good quality lens, and honestly, the technology isn't changing constantly like cameras. Sure, there's minor things like stabilization and things like that, but if you're purely into photography, that's not gonna change much. A Canon 35 1.4 L-series lens from like 10 years ago isn't that big of a difference than one now, and that's like a decade's worth of value there with that lens. Also guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, if you don't mind taking a second to lightly press the like button, you don't need to smash it, just lightly press it. It does help me, it does help the channel, it does help me produce more content like this, and if you're interested in more exclusive content, I do have my membership program for $4.99 a month. If you're interested in that, all the different perks, all the exclusive content, you can check that out by hitting the join button below. All right, the next piece of equipment I'm gonna talk about is tripods, and this is a bit of a hybrid for me. Tripods are a hard upgrade for my commercial work and a hard save for my editorial work. So in my editorial work, I don't use a tripod often, so I don't need an expensive tripod. I don't even often take one with me on shoots. <gasps> you don't take a tripod? No, I don't really need it typically because I've got that expensive glass so I can shoot in low light without stabilizing it, huh? You see that? So a tripod for me for my editorial work, I might even just go out with one of those little Jobies, like one of these little deals here. I might just like bring that out for certain situations and just kind of have that like attached to my bag because it weighs almost nothing. And sometimes if I'm doing a hybrid shoot, I might carry a tripod with me. I did try out that expensive gimmicky Peak Design tripod on a recent trip to Kenya and I didn't like it to be honest. It was $700, which was fine, but $700 for the carbon fiber version, but it was really flimsy and I was out in the middle of a field and anytime a gust of wind came by, it just like rattled the tripod and any video shots I did or time lapses, it just ruined it. So. Wasn't worth it for me. I'm sure some people like it. For me, I would save money in this area, and if I do need a tripod, I have a nice hybrid tripod. I did a whole review on this Monfrotto Be Free Live uh, sort of hybrid tripod with a fluid head. I really like that tripod. You don't necessarily need a fancy brand. I mean, I like Monfrotto because they're a good brand. They've been doing it for a long time, and they specialize in tripods, but look for a used one. The technology's not changing a lot. My tripod is like, I bought it new, and it's a six-year-old tripod, so. I save money there, the editorial work. Now on the commercial side of things, I spend money and we have a very fancy Gitzo, I call it Mega Tripod, that's not the official name, but it can go up like super high, which I need because when I'm doing commercial work, we're photographing ballrooms and meeting rooms. I know that sounds really sexy. Some days I'm photographing rhinos, other days I'm photographing ballrooms and meeting rooms, or boardrooms, if you will, get it. 
Anyway, so, uh, but I need a very sturdy tripod. I need a very precise head. So I have an Arca Swiss cube head, which is super expensive, and my Mega Gitzo tripod, which can go super high, but it's also a carbon tripod and really light, but it's also very, very expensive. I should also let you guys know, I do have a gear page where I talk about all my favorite gear on my website. You can check that out. It has affiliate links. You can check that out at justinmott.com. I'll put a link in the description box below. Moving on to bags. This is going to be an upgrade for me. I mean, if you're transporting all this expensive glass, thousands of dollars worth of glass, you want a bag that's gonna be reliable and is gonna protect that expensive gear. So this is kind of a no-brainer for me. I use Think Tank for all my commercial work, so all my roller bags, my backpacks, and things like that. And then I use Wotencraft for my personal work, my Leica kit, my editorial stuff, and my street photography gear. So full transparency, I am sponsored by both of those brands, but I was using both of those brands long before I had any sort of affiliation. But there's plenty of really good bags out there. Do your homework, do your research, look at their stitching, look at their zippers, look for good craftsmanship. That stuff's important. You don't want your bag falling apart on a shoe. You don't want your bag like ruining your gear because it's not that protective and the padding's not that good. Usually more money equals better materials, equals better craftsmanship typically. So do a little research on there. My Think Tank roller bag had for over a decade. It still works just fine. I also have a Think Tank shoulder bag that I used in college and I'm 44 years old. So isn't that crazy? Like that bag and it's still perfectly fine. Like bags are a hard upgrade for me because they protect your expensive gear that you've splurged on. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is accessories. I'm gonna group a few of these things together. I'm gonna talk about your computer, your memory card readers, your hard drives, and your memory cards themselves. And all of these are a strong upgrade for me because I care about speed and I care about reliability, but that's super important to me as a professional. If I'm doing a long shoot and I'm backing up in the afternoon before I go out to shoot again and there's thousands of dollars at stake, speed and reliability are important. I can't have these memory cards mess up on me. I can't have them transfer slow. I need things to happen quickly. And my editorial world, it's the same thing. I might be on a deadline. So I upgrade across the board in this stuff. I buy fast memory cards, fast memory card readers, fast hard drives, and I buy a fast computer. Usually I buy a MacBook Pro and I typically max it out with RAM. But again, that's just me. I need all of these things and I can justify the cost because I push these things, I use this equipment hard and I use them for a really, really long time. So at the end of the day, I might be processing thousands of images. I'm doing that on back-to-back -back days. And I need things to happen quickly, the import, the export, and the processing itself. So I need a fast computer, but you might not. If you're just shooting once a week, you know, or you're just going on a special trip and you're taking your camera with you and you're shooting only every once in a while, you might not need like the top of the line laptop. You might not need the top of the line hard drives and, and fastest card readers and fastest memory cards and that kind of stuff. So just give that some thought. For me, throughout my entire career, because I needed efficiency, because I needed reliability, that's always been important. And that for me, it's like one of the most unsexiest upgrades out of all of these. It is the unsexiest thing, like spending thousands of dollars on this stuff. Like, oh cool, I got a new card reader. I mean, not that fun, but you know, for me, it makes sense for you. It may not, again, that long, hard, and lastly, I'm gonna talk about lights for anyone that's using portable lights in their photography or their video work. This was always an upgrade for me. And over the past few years, I've been converted to a save. So I used to use all pro photo lights because of their reliability. I live in Southeast Asia, I'm in these remote areas and I wanted a, and I wanted a light that's just never gonna fail. Well, pro photos failed a couple times. The light burnt out a couple times. They're really hard to fix. Everything's really expensive. The modifiers are really expensive. They're just everything about pro photo is expensive. And I didn't find much of a difference when we converted to constant lights, which I'm using Aperture, and then I've recently been trying out these Cobra lights, which are even more affordable than the Apertures, and they're working really, really well, and they're tiny, and they're really cheap. I mean, I've got two of them here, they're $150 here, it's doing the backlight here and the light over here. And the same thing goes for modifiers as well. Get a light that uses a Bowens mount, and you can buy cheap modifiers. I mean, you don't need to spend like $500 on a softbox, you can get a cheaper softbox. And if you're not into constant lights and you need strobes, like I would also consider a company like Godox. We switched to them recently. Um, they're very affordable, very reliable. Again, don't have to worry about if they break, it's gonna be really expensive to replace them and they work really well. So again, it's been a recent, I'm like a recent convert to a save in that category. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know where you like to save and where you like to upgrade. I'd love to hear it. Put that in the comment section below, you guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and don't forget to have a wonderful day.